Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the, very, uh, is the one that you will find on page number 176. Please turn to page 176. Today is our lesson number 191 and the problem number 170 is what we are about to solve. The very last problem that you will see there in the first column. We are told here that we have a fraction here. We have a fraction which they are calling D. Which we are told equals 1 over 2 to the 3rd times 5 to the 7th. The question simply is how many how many non-zero digits does D have? Digits other than zero. Well, let's find out, shall we? The first thing to do is to break it up in something manageable. 1 over 2 to the 3rd times 5 to the 7th can be written as 5 to the 3rd times 5 to the 4th. 5 to the 7th is can be written as 5 to the 3rd times 5 to the 4th. So now we have this part, 2 to the 3rd and 5 to the 3rd, which is same as 1 over 10 to the 3rd. And here we have 1 over 5 to the 4th. How much is 1 over, 1 over 10 to the 3rd? But that's just 1 over 1000. 1 over 1000, which is simply 0 0.001. 0 0.001. Now let's figure out what is this 1 over 5, 5 raised to 4. This is the tricky part. This is where people will end up spending a lot of time. You have to do it in a smart way. Do you understand? Let's see what you can do here. 1 over 5 raised to 4. Don't just sit there and just, uh, don't just sit there and try to figure it out like this. There's nothing novel about it. There's nothing unique about it. There's nothing creative about it. This will take you forever, forever and ever as I see, just said. That's, that's not going to get you anywhere. 5 times 5 is 25, 25 times is 125, and 125 times 5 is 100, 625. And then if you sit there and try to do this out manually, as I said, this is not what we're looking for here. Let's chop it up into manageable parts that are easy to deal with. Can we write 1 over, 1 over 5 raised to 4 as 5 squared times 5 squared? Well, why not? And that can be written as 1 over 5 squared times 1 over 5 squared. And how much is 1 over 5 squared? Find out. Let's find out here. 1 over, 1 over 5 squared is same as 1 over 25. And how do we figure out quickly what 1 over 25 is in decimal? Well, 1 over 25 is same as, if you were to multiply the top and the bottom by 4, if you multiply top and bottom by the same number, essentially we are multiplying it by 1, which is okay to do. And now we can immediately see that 1 over 25 is same as 4 over 100, which of course is simply 0 0.04, which is simply 0 0.04. So this part here that we see, this part that we see here is simply 0 0.04 times 0 0.04, 4 times 4 is 16, and how many decimal places is it going to have? Let's, let's calculate it, let's find out, 1 and 2 and 1 and 2, 4 of them, alright, so here is our 16, here is our 16, and we need 4 of them, 1, 2, 3, and 4, there you go, that's your answer, 0 0.0016, and this is 1 over 1000, which was 0 0.001, we are almost done, we are almost done, where should we continue, let's continue here, so, 1 over 1000, times, 1 over 5 raised to 4, we just found out 1 over 1000 is 0 0.001 and 1 over 5 raised to 4, we just calculated, was 0 0.0016 because 1 over 5 squared, 1 over 5 squared is the same as 4 over 100 which is 0 0.04 Let's multiply 0 0.001 times 0 0.0016 we have, here is our decimal, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to have 7 decimal places with the 16 at the end. So here is your 16, 
That's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Voila, there is a decimal place. That's our final answer. And how many non-zero digits do you see there? Well, I see only two. These are all zeros. The only non-zero decimal place, uh, the digit that I see is one and a six. There you go. Question was how many non-zero digits is this going to if this is this fraction going to have? If you were to express that as decimal, the answer is two, one and six. And that's answer choice. That's answer choice B. Let's do the next one, shall we? We're done with this one. Let's do the next one. In the next problem, we have a 10,000 gallon of water and 5% and we are told that in it we have 5% sodium chloride. I believe sodium chloride is NaCl. Anyway, sodium chloride. If it's not, I'm inventing a new symbol. What is 5% of 10,000? Well, we know, we know that 10%, we know that 10% of 10,000 10% 10 of 10,000 is just going to be a tenth of that amount, which is a thousand. Therefore, therefore, 5% of 10,000 would be half of that, which is 500. And we are told that out of the 10,000, 2,500 evaporated. We are told that 2,500 gallon evaporated. So now we are left with. We are left with. 7500 gallon of water. Now ask yourself if some water evaporates, if you start the 5% concentration and if some water evaporates, nothing happens to the chemical, chemical does not evaporate. If some water evaporates, should that concent should the concentration of the solution go up or down? You have the same amount of chemical and the less amount of water. Should the concentration of the chemical go up or down? Obviously it should go up, it should be more concentrated. Because you have the same amount of chemical in 7500 gallon as opposed to 10,000 gallon. So the concentration will go up as we said. We know now that the answer choice A and B are silly. They are absolutely silly. I don't know what goes through the people's mind who sit there and pick 1 and a quarter percent and 3 and 3 quarter percent. The concentration cannot possibly go down. It will have to go up. I don't know what the hell is the answer is, but it's not. It cannot be anything less than 5%. It has to be more than 5%. It, is also, it will also not go all the way up to 11% for crying out loud. Just because a quarter of the water has evaporated, it's not going to more than double the concentration. The concentration will double if half the water evaporates. If instead of 10,000 gallon, if you are left with only 5,000 gallon, the concentration, whatever it was in the beginning, the, the, the concentration level will double. So if you started out with the 5% concentration, even, even in that case, it will only become 10%. He says 11.77%. This is silly. This is nonsense. We don't know what the answer, correct answer is, but it's got to be either C or D. So if you were running out of time and if you had to pick one, because we got three more questions to do still, we, should, we have to learn how to guess intelligently. And the intelligent guess would be to narrow down to C and D. And at that point, simply flip a coin and move on with your merry life. Do you understand? Don't agonize yourself. Just flip flip the coin and move on as I said. You've done as much as you could do under the circumstances. You're running out of time or you don't know how to do it. In either case, learn how to guess intelligently, which pays off quite handsomely in the exam. Not just in this exam, I suppose in any exam. You have to, you have to know uh, what the trap answers are and you have to know what nonsensical answers are. A, B and E are just pure nonsense. I don't know why they're there. Anyway, so we are now left with the $7,500 gallon uh, of solution with the 500 gallon of chemical. So let's find out the concentration level, shall we? It's just going to be 500 out of 75. Well, immediately we can uh, knock out the two zeros from the top and the bottom by dividing top and bottom by 100. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. 5 divided by 7 how many 5 minus 7? 7 has 1 5. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 5 becomes 25. How many 5s in 25? There are 5 5s in 25. So it boils down to 1 over 15. 1 over 15. Now if you were to leave it, if you were to leave it like this, the answer that we'll get will be in decimal. They're asking us how much percent. For example, if somebody asks you how much percent, 
and if you end up with a decimal uh, with a fraction of half, well, you can leave it as 0.5, but then you have to realize that that 0.5 is actually 50%. So you have to multiply multiply that fraction by 100 so that you get your 50% at the end. Obviously, we know that. That's exactly what we have to do here. We have to multiply this thing by 100. You with me? Which of course boils down to 100 over 15. How many 15 in 100? How many 15s in 100? Now, if that, sound, if that question sounds weird to you, and if you think that I am insane to be asking such idiotic questions, you have to slow down and ask yourself, what can we do with this thing? 100 divided by 15. Don't look at 100 as 100. Ask yourself, what is the closest number that you can think of, which is a nice multiple of 15? Well, I know 5 15s are 75. That you should know. Why is it that I say you should know what 5 15s are? These are basic things, basic elementary things and arithmetic that you should know. Because we know 10 15s, how much are 10? 10 15 is 150. 10 15 is 150. And therefore, if you were to take half of that, that's 75. 5 15s are 75. If you were to add one more 15 to it, we will get 90. In other words, what we are, what we are claiming here is that, what we are saying here is that 15 times 6 equals 90. 15 times 6 equals 90. Let's divide top and bottom by 15, shall we? If we divide top and bottom by 15, we'll get 6 and we'll have a remainder of 10, which of course is going to be written as 6 and 10 15. 10 15 because we're dividing by 15. 6 and 10 15, of course, is the same as 6 and 2 thirds percent. 6 and 2 thirds percent. 6 and 2 thirds percent ain't 6 and a quarter. The answer is D. If, we, if you've been watching my vocabulary video at my channel, you'll find that ain't in there, in the vocabulary lesson. Anyway, the answer is six and, six and two-thirds. Well, that reminds me, a little while ago I put down a word on the blackboard. The word, I believe, was novel. I do not remember in what context I used it. Oh, we were talking about trying to divide one over one raised to five, one over five raised to four, and if you were to do that as one over 625, I said there is nothing novel in it. What does novel mean? Novel has two meanings, obviously. The novel in this context means, novel means something unique, creative, out of the ordinary, exceptional, uh, something that is not run-of-the-mill, something that is not run-of-the-mill, something that is exceptional, something that is unique, creative, uh, something that is not mundane, something that is not hackneyed, cliché. Do you understand? This, is, this will be something, this, doing it like this, uh -huh, 1 over 625, would be very cliché, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary about it. Think in a creative way and break it up, chop it up into parts that become manageable. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.